To support this podcast, go to positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Any amount is appreciated. Once again, positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Thank you and enjoy the program. Bored housewives, so they're generally hitting the Moscato too because they need something sweet in their lives because their husband is f***ing sour. That ring on your finger? Some pygmy died digging that out of a f***ing hole for you to say I do and ruin some guys like, you know, look at that dude. He's got a hernia shaped like a bag of f***ing pretzels that he just ate. You're going to Thailand? You're going to smash some dude. Going over there for guy time, but it's not with his buddies. What does it say on the bottle? Well, if it says that on the bottle, why did you put it on your head? All these actors did was shut their mouths because they didn't want to be run out of Hollywood. Now a bad batch of Chinese food has you blowing insurance premiums on vitamin f***ing D. Really too much. <laughs> That's who we're I'm going sound like Bill Maher. Really, John? Really? really? We can't do this anymore, auntie. I'll see you at the bar mitzvah. It's almost like it never existed, but it f***ing did. So do me a favor. Go f*** yourself. Jay here, PositiveSarcasm.com, recorded here from the Spare Parts Studio. How's everybody doing? You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Facebook. Just look for Positive Sarcasm, at Positive underscore Sarcasm. You can find me part of Sarcasm. You can find me on TikTok at Positive Sarcasm. Check out my, uh, my, my, well, my website, PositiveSarcasm.com. You can do that too. I'm back, baby. I am back. I am back like bell bottoms. I am back like herpes. I am back. I am back like the back. Well, I'm back. I don't know. I'm just back. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be just happy to be. I'm happy to be human again. I'm happy to be. Uh, it's my reaction to. I'm, I'm. Well, my reaction to. First of all, I've been doing a, a lot since my return to YouTube, my return to Facebook, my return to, you know, seeing people again because it was a complete disappearance. But now that I'm doing things again and I'm releasing material on my first channel, my second channel, and actually I just finished content for my new third channel that maybe I'll explain if I remember to. And then I'm doing other things too financially that I'm working on as well uh, to basically get my life back together um, so I can basically fortify everything in my life so that, well, nobody can dictate what what de what decisions are made in my life no one so i'm as i was before completely focused on just setting in concrete everything going forward um as usual it's never an easy task but because i'm with my best friend chase who is about uh 15 feet away from me just looking at me with the cutest face in the world you know he's just lying there i checked him for ticks about two hours ago i should probably check him again um but I'm just, uh, I'm more focused than ever. Uh, and as far as, like, will we see a sequel to that episode that I did, you know, full disclosure? Um, you may. You may. But right now, no. I, I don't, ex I didn't originally, when I dropped that, I didn't expect there to be any sequel, any additional information. Um, and for the time being, I don't, I don't see there being one right now. Um, there's not enough information, and right now there's not enough regarding that for me to care. I said everything I had to say, and uh, my official statement is, um, despite those who wanted me to take it down, well, that's not happening. That's not happening. I don't take down episodes. Unless there's, like, a spelling error, I don't remove episodes. I don't remove content. That's just not the way it works. I find that um, my, since ever since my reaction to seeing like my nonprofit group again that I cherish so much, um, that was an emotional moment for me. And seeing certain people when I convey feelings to them, it, there's feeling there. There's a lot of emotion. When I saw Ken, when I was doing the Hero Pups ride, I was just there to take pictures and just let them know that I was here. And I brought Chase, and he was really well behaved. But my reaction to seeing uh, uh, her husband Ken, it was I got choked up really did you know for 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 whatever reason doesn't matter i really like ken he's just a he's just a, a good dude he's a hard-working guy and i really i got you know almost teary-eyed when i saw him again you know and when i saw my friends for the first time it was a lot of the times it was almost like i never left and a lot of them still have a lot of questions well i mean now a lot of them have been answered um maybe down the road more will be I mean, I have more information, but that's fine for now. It's it's just good to be 
coming back into everyone's lives and them coming back into my life, but it's all happen- happening at such a fast pace. And the funny thing is, everyone's willing to talk. Everyone's willing to help. They want to help me in some particular way. And I don't, I, I, I don't understand that, or maybe I didn't until now, because I was like, why? Why do you... I said before, it's like, you don't have to associate with me. You don't have to talk to me. You don't have to help me. Nobody should help me, blah, 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 blah. It's like, why would you want to help me? What satisfaction do you get out of that? Well, maybe it's because I'm... What, like, what do I deserve? But Maybe it's because I'm honest. Maybe because in this world of bullshit that's been going on for the past year and a half, probably much longer than that, it's just, I think people are sick of... Uh, People putting up fronts, people lying, being, dece- being deceptive, doing everything for the gram, just being fucking liars altogether. That I think it's such this at this point, somebody genuine and telling only the truth is such a high currency that people will do anything or do, go to an extended point to help someone or assist someone or gift someone. Uh, who is of pure of pure intention who's of who's of honest integrity that apparently that has some value like i would only want to have people who are honest and truthful and caring in my life and i think maybe that's like that's like a comeback that's like a thing people want that now people are tired of fake news they're tired of fake politicians they're tired of fake virtue signaling they're tired of fake me tooing they're tired of fake fake movements, and they're tired of fake relationships. They're trying to fake so- social media. They're tired of fake everything. And I'm kind of playing catch-up to all of this, and I see so much fakery and fraudulent behavior that at this point, I said when I come back, I'm going to come back harder. I'm not going to apologize for anything that I do, and I, I'm standing true to that more than ever. More than ever. So I think that at this point, that's what I'm going to continue to do. I mean, let me just check this here. How long does this thing go? I have no fucking idea. I have no idea. Like, I'm literally looking... Oh, there it is. There's a number. Is that a number? Six minutes. Okay, six minutes. We're only six minutes in. So, as I continue... Because I'm, I'm changing programs and I'm trying to figure out how long I'm, I'm going and whatever. Anyways. So, being honest... And somebody who has as much information who is, at this point, basically a, 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 an emotional journalist... There's some value and some currency just being honest and truthful. And people are starving for information. They're starving for truth. They're starving for genuine individuals that they're willing to help me out. They're willing to do things for me. They're willing to invite me or wanting to invite me to their stuff. And when I say to them, yes, I'm back. I am, I'm here. I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Here's my best friend. He goes with me everywhere possible. And, you know, can I bring him? And people are really happy to see me and i'm really happy to see them like i really i really am and i'm joyous and emotional that that takes place so you know and and first of all thank you to those who have contributed and donated you know the client my clients and listeners who have donated uh for whatever amount to this program and to to my site and to my content it's it is very much appreciated thank you it it matters a lot you know it keeps the site running or it supports the 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 in, in, the, the compensation to put the site out so so thank you there's a lot of love and a lot of content that goes into it a lot of hard work that goes into putting in that content that's how I wanted to word it you know so that was you know, I just want to get that out there that this isn't a, a a gossip channel. It's not supposed to be that. It's just one of those things where if I'm going to be honest with you guys and tell you honest things and do these Q&As where people have problems that they're trying to figure out, well, you need to know what's going on in my life to an extent so that you can understand where I'm coming from as a person. But when I have such an absence from this channel and all my other channels and just from p- my friends all together on a personal level. And you're like, dude, where the hell have you been? You'd be like, ah, I was dealing with some, some stuff. I, I, I can't really, I don't, I'm not really able to operate like that because 
do I want to tell 30 people in, in at individual times what happened? Or do I just want to get it all out there? And probably for good reason, because shitty people deserve to be outed and need to be outed. Because maybe they can change their ways. And if it was me being the shitty person, maybe it needs to be out there so I can change my ways. So, I have so much to, to catch up on. I have so many things to do, and I have such a short time to do some of these things in. So there's going to be a lot of movement over the course of the next 90 days, I think. There's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm working on behind the scenes. There's a lot of people I need to meet up with, and there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, I may not be in the way the place that I want to be, when with necessarily who I, I want to be with, but my best friend is with me. And that's really all I care about. You know, I still got... I still have, you know, my 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 health, um, my good looks, and I got my best friend, and he's never been happier, and it, I've I've never been more appreciative. And you know, it was a good way to show my appreciation by saying I will be at the for you know, it's been a you know, COVID obviously screwed up a whole bunch of stuff, but I was still able to make some content last year, especially for Hero Pups. And then I went back to this week, I our last couple weeks ago, and I was able to do their annual ride that they do with this Legion, uh, you know. And this was their best turnout because it had the best weather, and it was a huge, you know, success. And they made some money for the doggies, and they had some new dogs there, and they had the police department with their comfort animal, and it was good. And you know, I was able to, even though I wasn't really able to take video. Because I just I wasn't in that mindset yet, um, at least for this. I've been making videos, but just not for that. Um, I was able to give them a ton of photos. Um, I think I gave them like 300 photos, and I said, "Here, here's the card." Sorry. <laughs> um. So I've been able to. Give them the, give them some content that they can use and they can post, which they did. And then there was other people taking videos of the situation, of me taking the pictures. So they got their stuff. So it was a lot of fun. They did a good job. It was great. And it was great to see everybody again. And then I got to see some of my true friends. I have I have so many. I got shout outs. Uh, shout out to Keepsake. It's a really good company. If you want to have your picture framed and shipped wherever you want, uh, go to Keepsake.com. They're a great little company. So go and check them out. I will be using them again. So, you know, I mean, how have I been since I return since my return? These are your answers. There is uh something else in the room that I can't address right now. Um, but in time, I think I will, but we'll get we'll get to that another like I said, another day and we'll we'll sit down and talk about it. But since my return, a, a lot has been going on. I have been offered all kinds of stuff and I am obviously uh active again with all my channels. So, um you can check out, if you want to see what everything that's going on, well, as far as content goes, you can go and check out, um, you can go to my my primary YouTube channel, Positive Sarcasm, and check out For Love or Money. That's a great video. That's a, the sequel to, uh, what is it, Monochrome Rainbow. And that's the sequel to Monochrome Rainbow. Um, and then you can go to this channel and check out the it's called the sad stuff. You can see what's been happening for the past uh, basically three months, and then you can check out full disclosure. Full disclosure will get you completely up to date on everything that's been going on for the past year with me, and we then boom, we move forward next. Once I give you all the information I can, we move forward to the next thing. And this channel is basically just about basically just about uh, getting used to you know how I do this this thing again where. I read Q and A. I look at interesting articles. I review movies. You know, it's like well, I want to. I want to look at fun stuff. I'll, and I love. I, I lo You know me. I'm a big fan of, of of stuff. I love dogs. Like I saw this sh shit on uh, on IG the other day. I was just like, I don't know. For some reason, I watched it and it made me so freaking happy. I was like, I was like, I got it. I just, I love it, and I have to share it with people. <laughs>
love it. it. It's one of my favorite things. I like, I like light stuff like that too. I really do enjoy little things like that to kind of perk people's up because you know people are having bad days and sometimes you need stuff like that. But I wasn't having a bad day. That just only made my day better. And I hope that those you know the the two huskies between with a, with a little golden retriever nugget in the middle made made your day as well. If you're listening to the audio content, you can go check out. If you want to follow it on Instagram, just go to Doggos Doing Things on Instagram, and uh, you can go through their collection. Um, they're a private account, so you got to click follow. Um, thankfully, I'm wearing headphones because if the dog heard that, he would have freaked out. I did, however, uh, while I was away, manage to catch some really good movies. Um, first of all, I am I cannot say this enough about... 300 rise of an empire it is one of my for some reason one of my favorite movies now we get 300 and i've probably talked about this before but i'm gonna hit it again hit it again it is one of my favorite movies because it is all about these underdogs essentially the original 300 at thermopylae pass it was they knew they were going to die they didn't care but they were the most badass soldiers uh in europe I mean, they were just so disciplined from birth. They were the best at what they did, and that was combat, at being at being at war, being soldiers. They were the best. That's it. That's all they did was train to go to war. Um, but with Rise of an Empire, these guys were farmers and blacksmiths and carpenters and, you know, philosophers and whatnot but yet they had to put on the uniform as athenians and fight on the seas against the persians and this movie takes place at the same time that the the original movie 300 is taking place and i love the color scheme because this color scheme unlike the uh gold and red from the original movie this one is black and blue and it's take and it's very Zack Snydery, very Zack Snydery. Slow motion. Um, what do you call it? A lot of untuned sharp. Like it's it's not sharp. This, the the whole most of the content's not sharp. It's a little blurred. It's uh it's green screened. It's just it's it's gory. It's aggressive. It's and the booming soundtrack by by Junkie XL is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it's just a reoccurring role, a recurring song over and over and over again. You hear it, I think, three times in the movie. In the beginning, when the Battle of Marathon. In the middle, when the first naval assault takes place. And at the end, when the fucking uh, uh, per- when the Spartans show up. And it's like, oh, I just you just love it. You love hearing it because it's so booming. It's so aggressive. And this is the group that... They're not as powerful. They'd get their asses kicked by the Spartans. But they're Greeks, nonetheless. So they don't war with the Spartans. It's just the Spartans don't want to play nice with anybody else. They just want to do their own thing. But then when they go and attack the Persians Persians on their own, outman 3-1, to one, they still win. It's just not as disciplined. It's messy. But they're underdogs. And they go into the naval battles as underdogs. And everyone loves an underdog story. Which is why I relate to it so well, because at the end, they win. They win. The underdog wins. And this is why I relate to it so well, because for the longest time, I have been an underdog. And I never really felt like I won. I never really felt like I accomplished something. And now, I have won. I, I've, I've won. I've, I've won something. Like, I have something, and it's not like he's a trophy, and my independence is not a trophy either. It's, it's, it's glory, it's, it's, ha- it's happiness, it's meaning, it's an accomplishment, it's purpose, it's everything that's running through your DNA and the values that you came up with. It's everything that is so special about being alive. And, so, and that movie, for some reason, just hits me in that spot where I have to watch it over and over and over again because I just fucking love the movie so much. I mean, it was, I think I wrote it down as 
This movie was five minutes away from being the one of the greatest war movies of all time. Because it basically shows, once the Spartans show up, you basically get a couple minutes, you get like a minute or two of the Spartans kicking ass, you know, boat to boat, and then the movie just kind of ends. So it's like, oh, the Spartans are going, it, it, yeah, it's like the Spartans are showing up, and it's like, oh, I'm not going to fuck shit up. But then the movie kind of like, all right, we're good, you know what's going to happen, the end. And it's like, okay, all right, all right. But if you had like another minute or two of them just going boat to boat, the Spartans, the, the Athenians, the Thebes, the Spart I mean, all the, all the, the, the groups of all of Greece going boat to boat and just rocking it. That would be cool. That would be super cool. But they didn't do that. Instead, they just ended it with everybody coming towards the screen, you know, with, with you know, Persians getting their shit pushed in. And they called it, they called it a day. This movie was designed for 3D. So there's a lot of close contact in it. There's a lot of blood splatter and, you know, shields and stuff. But it shot really, really well. Sullivan Stapleton, who I don't know at all, uh, was an excellent Themistocles. And I, that's how I felt in this situation is I felt like Themistocles. I definitely was like, I am going through him. But he's a tactician of war. He's a tactician. He understands war. He's also, he works in the highest political powers as well. So he understands that side of things too. So in this movie, he tries to get the Spartans to join with him. They refuse. And then after Thermopylae pass and the death of King Leonidas, he kind of gets his ability to make him make uh, Athens, which was just burned to the ground, and King Leonidas in the 300 as martyrs. And that's what gets Spartan, Sparta, excuse me, to join with the rest of the Greeks and pretty much annihilate the Persians. So excellent movie. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know when I'm going to decide, all right, I'm tired of this flick, but a really good movie. I bounce between, like, I call it a four-star movie, but, man, when I'm watching it, it's five stars to me. But I know, to me, it's, to me, as a critic of movies, I feel it's a four-star uh, war movie. It doesn't have a lot of war in it, though. But then again, neither did 300. It has about, the action scenes in 300 are comparable in length to the Rise of an Empire. It's it's more about the attitude and the slow motion and the pace and the and the pantomime. Like, I mean, it takes like a couple minutes for that boat, for the two boats to smash into the other boat and sink it. But when it's happening, you're so in it and you're so into it. And you're, you're almost cheering on. You're almost cheering on and you're feeling that song too, just... Uh, 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 uh. and you're just like oh my god i just want to go out and fucking fight people so that is what i love about this movie and every character in this movie i really do enjoy like i don't know much about um invitation for craigslist alternatives yeah i can leave that one alone um so yeah every character in this movie uh, every actor in this movie, actor, actress, whatever. Um, Eva Green, who plays Artemisia. I, first of all, amazing actress, or actor, I don't know how I fucking pronounce it, whatever. Amazing entertainer, amazing star. She's gorgeous, she's just got that, that voice, ah! and uh, she plays a badass Artemisia. She's pure evil. Um, yeah, she's excellent. She, if you don't know her, you, you well, you, you have seen her. She was in Skyfall. She was, uh, you know, 007 Skyfall. She was also in, what was that Jerusalem movie? Kingdom of Heaven. Yeah, she was also in Kingdom of Heaven. She was in another movie too, uh, but I don't know the name of it because I actually didn't see it. But she's in it. Um, the guy who played Xerxes from the first one is also in it as well. Sullivan Stapleton, I don't even know where he's from. But he does a very good job of playing Themistocles. Uh, Gerard Butler's character as Leonidas is not in it uh, verbally. He's just in it in passing in, in certain parts. Uh, who else is in it? All the original actors um, from 300 are in it too. So the uh, the little hunchback, he's in it. The dude who got his eye cut, he's in it. Um, they're all very good. They're all serviceable actors. The ones who are serviceable fit the bill perfectly. Um, it's definitely a good, cheesy, dude war movie. The sex scene in this movie is 
one that was talked about in magazines. It's interesting, for sure. It's definitely interesting, for sure. So, um, worth checking out. It's like, I think this movie's like two, two hours and 15 minutes. It, it paces itself very well. A lot of fun. Definitely check it out. But speaking of Gerard Butler, I finally got the cojones to watch Greenland. Greenland, if you don't know, is a is a apocalypse movie about a giant um, battery, a giant comet, a giant comet battery, with all of it, with its fragments hitting all over the uh, all over the world, and the one that's the size, one that's like eight miles wide, that's assen- essentially an ELE, is going to strike uh, somewhere in Europe, and basically since it's going to hit land. It's essentially going to wipe out pretty much every every piece of surface population. And this movie, unlike all the other apocalypse movies that I've seen, such as 2012 or San Andreas or The Day After Tomorrow, which also is a Roland Emmerich movie, which was also 2012 was a Roland Emmerich movie. This one didn't have any cheesy stuff. It wasn't cheesy. It didn't have any huge ridiculously huge like uh, apocalypse scenes it wasn't really about that it was it was more about the struggle of a family trying to make it through essentially the end of the world uh by trying to get to greenland because greenland apparently there's some bunkers there and people have been selected based on their occupation so skill set and because his character is of certain value, he gets selected, and they get these tickets, and it's, you can bring your wife, you can bring your kid, and that's it. So they make their journey up there, and the scenes are, you know, they get how they get separated, they're going through their own personal struggles, people saying goodbye, you know, people getting jealous, there's fights because some people are wearing bracelets and others aren't. So it becomes one of those things. And it, it's that that struggle is is easily shown in this in this movie, and the set scenes are pretty simplistic, and it has a what the fuck did I just do? God, can't wait to get a real spare part studio. Um, it's it, it really does separate itself by actually trying to take itself seriously, by saying basically this is a real thing that's that's taking place. We have doomsday bunkers. This is a real thing that could possibly happen. We have extinction-level event comets and asteroids that are out there right now floating through the galaxy. I mean, thankfully, we ruled Apophis out. Apophis was possibly going to strike 30 years from now, but then we just ruled it out because it's not going to hit the keyhole, and I've talked about it many times on the podcast. So, but these are real things. It deals with a real-life scenario that's totally going, that totally could happen and maybe eventually will happen. And how we can learn to avoid it. So, now the funny thing I thought, I was thinking about this, is like, wait a minute. What is not present in this movie? And it made me really sad. It's like, oh man, but they do a really good job of not, of, of hiding it. What do you not see in this movie? Because if you are able to bring your, your, your spouse and your kids, what can't you bring with you? Your pet. You can't bring your dog. What's the one thing that you never see in this movie at all? At least from, remember, from when I remember viewing it. And that was animals. No dogs are in this movie. No dogs. You don't see one canine. The reason, and the reason being is when people die in a movie, it can be sad, it can be tragic, it can be well-deserved. When dogs die in a movie, it is heartbreaking and it actually hurts the value of the movie. It actually, people check out. People when a, when a dog dies in a movie, people ninety percent of the time emotionally check out from the rest of the movie. If the dog dies at the end, then it's a movie about acceptance or sadness, or it's the culmination of the it's it's the end. But when a dog like a dog dies like halfway through the movie, or a dog in the beginning dies in the beginning, something like that, the movie, uh, for some reason, for some reason, a helpless animal dies, the movie loses all of its value. It may, it makes it just makes you turn your brain off. It's like the worst thing has happened, 
this movie has no value to, any, to me anymore. So you don't see any animals, any speak, any talking of any animals. There's no reference to dogs in any part of the movie. It's all about people. Because in this movie, every dog dies. And they just don't talk about it. They don't talk about it. You can't, They don't say, no, you can't bring Scruffy. You can't bring, I don't know, what do people name their dogs nowadays? Uh, George Clooney. I don't know, but you can't bring your dog. You can't bring your dog to work. Not no mo. So every dog dies in this movie. And that's what I take away from Greenland. Great movie, every dog dies. So I don't know how else to convey it to you, but that's pretty much the size of this movie. Now, great movie overall. Great movie overall. A lot to look forward to. One, probably one of the better, definitely one of the best uh, apocalypse movies I've seen, for sure. So, that's the. thankfully, they avoided that talk. They avoided that concept. Because the last thing you want to see is a golden retriever falling through a giant crevice because of a giant earthquake or uh, a, a fucking, you know, a, a Great Dane getting hit by a tidal wave. That's just not... It doesn't, it's not good cinema. That's just torturous to any dog lover, any animal lover. So it's not worth it. Um, so anyways, I, I talked about uh, since I've been back, who I've been keeping up with, keeping up with the Kardashians, and uh, my reaction to seeing the, the HP crew after the first ride of the year, which was awesome. Uh, I talked about 300 Rise of an Empire. That's a must-see. I talked about Greenland. That's a good movie. You have to see that if you're into, uh, you know, Apocalypse movies. Uh, I did also catch... Uh, I did catch Sonic the Hedgehog. That's actually not bad. Like, if you want to watch a movie, if you just want to throw something on, definitely check out Sonic the Hedgehog. It's it, Kudos to them for doing it right. Like, they actually put this shit together to the way where, um, you know, Sonic actually looks like Sonic. So, definitely check that out. Give that a look. Um, I also gave a shout-out to Keepsake, uh, keepsake.com. Go and check them out. Um, if you want to like, have a, like a nice picture framed, dig, a nice digital picture framed and sent wherever you want it to be sent to, there's a lot of different options there. Uh, I have the ability, uh, the one I went with, I think is like an 11 by six cause I shot in widescreen. Um, I can't show you the picture cause it's got a little kiddo in it. Uh, but it's a really pretty picture and, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really awesome. So, and then the hero pups ride went really well. Uh, I showed you the dog howling video just because I felt like it. And I also thanked everybody who uh, donated to the podcast in the past few months. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. More to come. If you have questions, concerns, comments about um, anything, you know, you know, I think podcast related, anything video related, uh, any, any content that you want me to uh, maybe or do for you, you can hit me up. Go to positivesarcasm.com. Click on the contact section. You can go there. Or... You can email me directly, positive sarcasm at elk.com. But this is something I haven't done in a long time. And I feel like I am in a position to actually deliver this to you once again. And this is Dig Q&A. I haven't gone to this site since this whole thing started. And I am so glad to be back here to see what other what problems are going on in other people's lives other than my own. So... This is going how we're going to close out shop for the day. I'm not going to do any content as far as like article reviews or whatever. I'm just going to get to this and get out um, because I oh, – oh, and uh, a music – I'll close on that thing also if I remember. But anyways, so support the podcast any way, shape, or form. Let's do some dig Q&As and see how we do. Man, it's been a while since I've addressed other people's problems. Here we go. Oh, actually, let me open up a uh, second monitor there. Also, if you want to check out the podcast in the audio format, anywhere where podcasts are available, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, you know, Podcast Addict, um, Spotify, anywhere where podcasts are available. Anyways, here we go. Q&A. How can I prevent my future stepdaughters from wearing their preferred underwear at my wedding? I am getting married, and my fiancé's daughter, 19 and 21, are in the wedding party. I have purchased the dresses they are wearing, which are light and flowing. I have told the girls that on the day of the wedding, I do not want them wearing thong underwear. The older one then went to her dad and said she didn't want to wear regular underwear. He told her she could wear whatever she wants. I have tried telling them that as young ladies, they are, there are times you don't wear thongs. And under a flowing dress is one of them. It's one day of their lives. 
How can I get my point across? Um, well, look, I you can you can get your point across. You can explain it to them, but at the end of the day, you can well you can do whatever you want. It's look, it's your oh it's your fiance's daughters. Then it's up to the discretion of your fiance. Your fiance has to convey that information. Uh, but it's if it's you guys' wedding, then people should be focused on what makes you guys happy. I've, I've said this for the longest time, that it should always be about the bride and the groom. It should always be about those two stepping up to, you know, to exchange vows. And nobody else. Nobody else. So if, as far as your, your, the daughters here, the 19-year-old and the 21-year-old who are probably just looking for a piece of ass at the wedding, well, I mean, there's many different types of underwear. You can show them, cre- you can show them all kinds of options. Well, you probably shouldn't show them the options. I'm assuming your fi- fiancé probably should. Um, but there's many different options for them to choose from. Neondies, Neondies. Uh, I'm not Bill Burr, but yeah, Neondies.com. Um, so forward slash Burr. But... If they choose not to, well, what are you going to do? They're going to wear light flowing dresses, and then when the photographer takes the photos, their uh, their you know their cinnabuns are going to be showing, and you know what? That's on them, and that's will be that's that's will be that'll be a mistake that they remember for the rest of their lives. That's fine with me, but I think that's as far as you can go with that. Let's get to the next Q and A. I think we're probably going to do end up like maybe forty five minutes today, which is fine with me because last week's podcast was two hours and ten minutes. I had a lot to say. Uh, go check it out, Positive Sarcasm Podcast. Should I tell my friend I'm hurt that she grew distant after she overheard me mocking her son? <laughs> oh boy, my friend Laura has seemed distant to me lately. She's one. Uh, she is one from a group of four women who have been friends for a number of years. When I remarked on Laura's distance to me to another friend from the group, she said, I know why Laura's behaving this way. Do you want to know more? Do you want to know more? Of course I did. She then told me that I must have inadvertently butt-dialed and called Laura on my cell phone. Butt-dialing still exists. Laura told our friend that she heard my husband and me making fun of her son. (laughs) I was shocked. If someone had mistakenly dialed me, I would never listen to their private conversation. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. Our mutual friend, however, said she would totally listen because she's telling the truth. Uh, most important, I would never make fun of Laura's son. He was mentally challenged. Oh, yeah, you did make fun of him. Uh, why didn't she confront me in front of others' friends instead of telling them that when I wasn't there? I feel like I've been tried and convicted. I'm also really angry that she eavesdropped. Should I bring this up to Laura? All right, I... Look, look you called the kid retarded. You probably did the, uh, you probably did that, um, and, okay, whatever. It, it's, you did that, look, I'm not going to say for whatever, whatever, but if you did do it, and she did hear it, and it is her kid, well, you have to address it with them directly. Because if you did do it, you need to talk to them about it. it you know, you talk to your friends. You talk to your friends, you let them know. If they heard it, you address it. That's all. You just, you have to do it. But here's the thing, you're covering shit up for stuff you probably did. So, in this case, the cover-up is worse than the crime. Actually, in this case, the cover-up is definitely, definitely worse than the crime. This is like, you know, you, you borrowed some money from a booster at a college, but then when they said, did you take any money from a booster, you're like, no. And then it's a whole shit show. In this situation, this is something that could easily be resolved, in my opinion. In my opinion, how would I know? Um, where you could be like, listen, I... Yeah, I maybe said some things. I was probably a bit insensitive. I was being casual at the time. But don't lighten it up as much as you need to. You don't need to do – don't, you know, ask. Yeah, I said it, but it's no big deal, right? You know, it's like, look, I, I said some things. I should – you know, you dialed. You heard it. Look, you, you know, how can we – is there any way we can kind of rectify this? And that's – that's all. I mean, if there's more to this, that's fine. But listen, you're denying it. I would never make fun of it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. You did do it. And I would never listen to somebody else's. That's a lie. So you said you'd never listen to somebody else's conversation. That's incorrect. You said that you would never make fun of her son that's mentally challenged. Yes, you did. So you've already lied twice. And you need to address that. 
Um, she, and first of all, she wasn't eavesdropping. You called her. It's not eavesdropping when somebody calls you and they pick up. So when they realize that they're not talking to you, but they're talking about your kid and how soft he is, then guess what? That's not eavesdropping. That's them trying to figure out what's going on. And when they found out that was what was going on, they were clearly upset. So you need to apologize. And you need to put your phone in a different pocket. You need to put your phone in a different pocket and stop calling the kids retarded. Boop, boop. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the next car. Should I keep waiting for the women I play online games with to leave her husband for what? Should I keep waiting for the woman I play online games with to leave her husband for me? Oh, I thought you were, like, playing game. You know, like, uh, players only love you when they're playing, that type of shit. No, 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 you play fucking World of Warcraft with this bitch. I have been friends with Remy for six years. We play both. We both play the same computer game on the same platform. Okay, and we always enjoy chatting as we play. A little over a year ago, I was single and found myself developing feelings for Remy. Uh, we'd always just been friends, but gradually an attraction grew. Before I knew what was happening, we both found ourselves falling in love. We have so many similarities and shared interests. It's so easy to talk to each other. It's been over a year of our sharing the intense romantic connection. But there's a catch. I knew that she was technically married and had a kid, but I always thought that she was separated from her husband. It turned out that wasn't the case. She insists she's going to separate from him, though, and is just waiting for her new house to be done so that she can move. Meanwhile, I'm in limbo, not knowing what's going to happen. Annie, what do you do? This is the the person that they sent the information to. What do you do when the woman you love is happily un, unhappily married? She says she loves me and wants to be with me, and I'm so excited to have found someone who connects with me so deeply. Uh, our only clashes come on the weekends when she has to play house and can't write to me. I've been mostly understanding up until now, but it's starting to get a bit frustrating. Uh, this doesn't. This is not a relationship that's actually going to work. That's the problem. This is a relate. This isn't a relationship. This is like an infatuation with somebody that you've had a verbal understanding over over you know fucking I don't know Warhammer 40k or you know Half Life Part Two or Doom Eternal. That's all this is. This is all, that's all this is. This isn't anything. I and mean, first of all, where does this person live? You're gonna do a long distance relationship with somebody you you were in a death match with. You know, uh, you ha you shared a few glory kills with. Is this is not going to work? You're waiting for somebody else to leave that relationship so that they can all of a sudden shack up with you. This isn't a realistic situation, and this isn't a situation that's going to end well. So this is not one that you want to get involved with. So you need to end this relationship and listen. And, and you know what you need to do? Actually, be like, look, I do have feelings for you. I do care about you, but we would have to start this thing from scratch. But you're married, and I shouldn't be talking to you. Because maybe that husband, maybe that husband will all of a sudden, this is the one fucking thing that pisses me off, all right? You understand that you, look, maybe this guy's going through some shit or whatever, or maybe he's just a bad husband, but maybe he wants to turn things around, and he's trying really hard to, re to get her attention all over again and try to reestablish that romantic connection. And as a married man, he has that right. And as a married woman, she reserves that right. So he should absolutely, if he's trying to get his shit together, he should be the one who has first crack at it. He's the one who has first strike. He's in the relationship, and whether right or wrong as far as what he is or what he's done, unless they're getting, unless they get divorced, you should basically end this situation and be like, listen, you're a married woman. I shouldn't be talking to you like this. This is wrong. Do you know why? Because it is wrong. It is wrong, it is of poor character, and it's very poor values to be talking to a person in a relationship, married or just in a relationship. You don't do that, okay? You don't fucking do that. If you didn't learn anything from last week's two-and-a-fucking-half-hour podcast, it's if you, you don't do that. You don't fucking do that. Whether it's the woman going out there and, suck, and, and seeking it out or somebody else coming in and trying to play on your lawn, it's wrong. It's wrong and you don't do it. So understand what you're doing is not the right thing to do, and you should just back out of it. And you could still be of, poor, you could still be of good character if you understand this and then address the situation being like, listen, I do care about you, but you're married. 
if if you get divorced and you still want to consider possibly taking this a step further, then let's go from there. But we can't be more than just team play co-op on freaking, you know, on on this on online gameplay. It has to be like a thing like, hey, do you want to go for coffee or ice cream or go for a walk on the beach or have our dog, you know, set a play date with our dogs? And she's also got a kid. So you're going to have to take that into account. Kids and dogs are hard work, you know, so consider that going forward. But what you're doing right now is not a smart decision. And it will only hurt you a lot down the road. All right, let's keep uh, let's keep going here. Should my wife, the head of HR at her company, quit her job after cuddling with an employee? My wife is the head of HR at her small nonprofit and has had a very close relationship with somebody who, for a long time, reported to her. My wife was a big advocate for this person getting promoted to her current position. My wife and her friendship with her had made me slightly uncomfortable. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Anyways, as I have thought it was overly familiar for a work relationship, for what it's worth, oh, okay, for what it's worth, we are not monogamous. She has been with many women, and I am not jealous in the slightest. The professional context is is getting is getting to me as detailed below okay anyway so is this is this a, a wife wife marriage or i'm just i want to know what that situation is like but whatever anyway my wife shared with me that she gave her report slash peer a ride home and then went inside to her reports her reports house and then they cuddled for a while before her report admitted an attraction to which my wife replied let's just stick with cuddles Okay, I have told her that it is wildly unprofessional, which it is, to be this close to anybody in work context. Context, I agree. Um, particularly somebody who used to be a report. Okay, and particularly when you are the de facto head of HR. No argument here. I think she's finally coming around to believing me. I just feel terrible because there's a junior employee who's 10 years younger whose reputation is at stake too. My wife's rapport shouldn't have to field accusations of unfair advantage or have her pay scale questioned. Point. My wife is currently arguing to a budgetary committee that this employee needs a raise. Imagine if the raise goes through and then any of this comes out. What now? Is this salvageable? I told my wife she needed to stop seeing the employee outside of any context that wasn't the office. That any meeting outside of the office needed to be treated as an extension of the workplace. And that any communication needed to happen through work, email, or Slack, period. Full stop. But I also think she should apply somewhere else and get out of before any of this gets to other members of her team. The CEO or the board. Ooh, there's a board. She thinks the situation is fine and just will be awkward for a while. I worry that if she waits and this comes out, she'll not only be, be potentially fired, but her reputation will be so damaged she won't be able to find work anywhere else. It just feels like she needs to get out and get out now. In this situation, yes. First of all, I don't I don't fuck with HR. HR is not a thing for me. I don't I don't do HR. Uh, second of all, yes, this person needs to leave the work. Obviously, argue for the best case scenario for the other employee, and then call it a day. Pack your shit, and get out. Look at this point, yeah, it could easily get out. That could that other person could get pissed off, file a report, and then basically you're the you're the one everybody's pointing the arrows at, and that's not a good thing. So you should absolutely. Unequivocally, 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 as the H head of HR, get out. Just pack your shit and get out. You don't have to admit to anything. This is corporate work. I don't give a fuck about honesty in corporate work because I don't give a fuck about corporate shit. So basically, if you want to just get out of the situation and say, look, I, I'm moving on to other things, and it's probably for my best interest and the company's best interest that I just, you know, I call it a day. You go find another job that pays you well. And you, and you're done. That's it. Just get out. It is. There's there's too much risk involved with this. So, no, you're right. Yes, stop seeing the employee. Put in your notice, and move on to another job. Should I warn my daughter's wedding guests that she and her fiance are planning a gender bending wedding? It turns out that my daughter is going to be the groom at her wedding, and the presumed groom is going to be the bride. I feel like I should, I should I feel like I should warn our guests, many of whom would not understand this and might choose not to attend. I've also drafted several messages, but I can't find a good way to explain this. 
I also don't want it to be hurtful to my daughter if it gets back to her. Can you help me compose this message? All right. Um, well, okay. Look, I'm going to be kind of a, a traditionalist here. Anybody can get married, in my opinion. Well, anybody can get married because, look, it's just one of those legally binding things. It's like two people commit to each other, okay? And in a same-sex relationship, I mean, I don't know if you have bride and groom or bride and bride or groom and groom. I don't know, whatever. But when you've got the biologicals involved, you got two people, biologicals. Look, one's a bride, one's a groom, all right? Marriages are based on tradition, so fucking treat them as such. If it's a tradition, then you treat it like a tradition. You have a bride and you have a groom. You have a guy and you have a girl. And then if you have a guy and a guy, then you have a bride. You have a groom and a groom or you have a groom and a bride. But in this case, you have a guy and a girl. So guess what? You have a guy and a girl. You have a bride and a groom and not the other way around. OK, so if it is a t traditional in the sense wedding, then just make it traditional. Otherwise, I think you're just being an asshole at this point about oh, we're going to bend the gender uh, at the wedding because we think it's cool or different or whatever. I don't see any reason why you would want to do this. Like if, like if, for example, if, if if a chick, like if the best man happens to be a woman, that's different. I think that's different because that's like the best, that's the best person. It doesn't have to be the best man because if your best man happens to be a woman, that's great. I went to a wedding where it was like that. You could have your best man and your uh, groomsmen be women. It don't ma That don't matter. It's your best crew. That's your best crew. That's different though. You, it's tradition to have a crew of people who got you through shit. Some of them just happen to be chicks. And bridesmaids and a maid of honor could be a dude, most likely won't be, but it just happens, or, or a gay dude, that's also possible, um, who happen to get you through, through some shit and can help you with your wedding the most. But as far as a bride and a groom, if you got a guy and a girl... You got a bride and a groom, and you guess what? You put one with one. You don't flip them because you think you're being cute. Now you're just being an idiot. So that's my thoughts on that one. Let's keep moving here. Was it outrageous for a restaurant manager to ask my fiancé to remove his baseball cap 47 years ago? Huh? This happened in 1974. I was outraged then, and I'm still outraged now when I think about it. My then-fiancé and I had just sound, sat down to eat in a diner, when the manager came over saying that another guest objected to the baseball cap my fiance was wearing, I told him to remove it, which embarrassed he, which embarrassed he immediately did. I don't feel it was the manager's place to say anything. Nothing about our looks or behavior was objectionable. I'm not I'm not even sure my fiance was the only man wearing a cap. How should this have been handled? I was all for getting up and leaving immediately, but he was hungry. All right, restaurant standards are restaurant standards. So. A true person, a true man, anybody, if you walk into a restaurant, you take your hat off. It is a sign of respect to the restaurant. It is a sign of respect to the employees who are serving your food, the server who brings you your food, the hostess who seats you. It is basically a sign from way back in the day of chivalrous action. You take your helmet off. You open up your mask, your face mask to show that you are of respect to the people in front of you, that you are harmless, you are not to engage in battle. That's why you take your hat off. If you walk into a restaurant, you take your hat off. You take your cap off. You do this. There are, uh, I mean, if, you have, if you're like a cancer patient and you've got no fucking hair and you're wearing a bandana, that's different. This is not that situation. We're talking about a situation where a guy walked into a restaurant. Now, as far as diners go, well, I mean, define a diner. I mean, I, I get... At 2 a.m. in the morning, if you're fucking hammered and you're just stumbling in, maybe you leave your hat on. But in 1974, maybe st standards were different. As far as I'm concerned, you're walking into a restaurant. If you walk into a restaurant, you take your hat off. That's basically it. There's nothing beyond that. The fact that you're angry, well, I think in most cases, you'd be wrong. So... And yes, it should be, it's universal. You don't wear hats indoors. You don't fucking open your umbrella when you're indoors uh, at a diner. Not sure why that makes sense, but okay. Um, you just don't do it. You take all that stuff off. You're there. You address people without your hat on, without your sunglasses on. You take that stuff off. Kind of, I mean, what, you're afraid somebody's going to see your bald spot or whatever? Just take your stupid hat off, all right, and, and be a... Uh, be a gentleman. 
that's that's pretty much it. I'm that one I don't really don't have to argue with in my head. That one's like you walk into a restaurant, you take your hat off. If you're going into a department store, that's different. But you're walking, you're sitting down and having food, you take your hat off. So um, that is it for Q and A. I I did want to uh, quickly bring up. I don't know if I did. What I'm doing is I just did the first test version of my third. I'm starting a new channel. I'm starting a third channel. And it's going to be the Positive Sarcasm Music Reaction Channel. So I'm going to call it Positive Sarcasm Reacts. And I'm going to be doing music video reactions. I've been watching uh I've been I've been watching music video reactions for quite for a couple of years. And I mean, some people are okay at it. Some people are really good. Some people are really funny. And I get to see new music, new music out of it, and I get to see ways that people react to the music. Some people are a little overblown, over-dramatized. Some people are really dry and not good at it. Uh, some people are great at it, and it really suits them well. So I'm going to be testing out. I, I just reviewed the first one. Uh, I'm, I was playing with the music and the, the sound, like because I obviously I'm reacting to it at the same time. And I think the way the, the setup that I have available to me, I have to actually press pause for me to actually talk to you if I have to press pause and, and convey some information such as the, the cinematography work or some historical background I have to hit pause talk about it really quickly and then jump back into the music which is a lot of a, what a lot of the youtubers do so I think it would be I'm really excited to I am actually excited about something I enjoyed doing that because it doesn't take long to do it's great content it introduces you to new music and music introduces you to music that I like or that I want to try out or stuff that you want I want you to see and it could be rock music it could be uh, it could be electronic music it could be cinematic music that I've used for some of my con my own content um, it could be soundtrack stuff so but you'll see a lot of rock like metal music you'll definitely see a lot of that so if you're into that type of thing you'll definitely like this channel as far as some of that stuff that's going to be on there so uh, there's that um, we're coming up on uh, 55 minutes. Uh, not bad for the second podcast back since all this shit started. So uh, I'm happy to be doing this. There's there's a lot of things. That, like I said, thank you to, to HP for having me back, allowing me to be back. I, I need to catch up with them really, really soon. Like I send them a text, um, you know, you know, like holding them to that, hey, let's have a drink together type of thing. I'm happy to see my family again. I'm happy to be talking to my family again. I'm happy to be talking and seeing my friends again. I'm happy to be seeing and talking to my clients, as I've always been doing, and starting new content and looking at new concepts and doing all that silly stuff. And I'm happy to be starting a new channel, and I'm happy to be loading up all my channels with new content. I really am. I'm happy to be hanging out with my puppy. Maybe I'll take him for a walk in the middle of town or something like that. It would be a really great thing. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really thankful for, you know what I'm really thankful for? Lawyers. I'm really thankful for fucking the lawyers. I'm really thankful for a close friend of mine um, who I did his wedding to recommend a specific lawyer to me. And I'm really, really thankful that, although that lawyer was really expensive, uh, to be one of the fucking best lawyers uh, for this particular um, thing. So I'm really thankful for lawyers right now. I mean, they're good at what they do. They really are. So uh, thank you to that group for uh, what you did for me. You may not, I mean, you knew from the beginning what I was I was trying to accomplish, and you did it all. You did it all. And I could not be more thankful that every night when I close my eyes, uh, my best friend is right there with me. And every day when I wake up, He's right there waiting to start the day with me. And every day when I come home, he's right there and excited to see me. And every time we get to do things, every every chance that we want to go do something, he's ready and to do it. And it's because of them that I have that recourse. And the man doesn't always win in these scenarios. Matter of fact, they almost never wins. But in this case, he did. And uh, I'm just really thankful for all of this. I'm really thankful for my best friend for giving me uh, a, a brand new uh, high-speed Asus Republic of Gamers laptop. It's one of the best. It's one of the best in the industry. I'm thankful for that stuff. I'm thankful for the new gear, some of the new gear that I have. Um, I'm thankful for my family, you know, 
doing what they did. I'm, I'm thankful to Johnny Monotone for reaching out as much as he has. I'm thankful to HP and Laura for reaching out as much as they have and inviting me back into their lives, knowing that I am such a hothead and, and, and uh, you know, open individual as I am. I'm really thankful for that. And, you know, it is, it is, it is great to have people take me seriously like they do. So, um, yeah, well, before I get too emotional, I just wanted to say that thank you to, to everybody. And look, I'm going to give back as much as you've given to me. I'll give I'll give you whatever I can. I obviously have a lot um, more to do. Like in the next ninety days, I have I've got to take care of some things. Uh, some things are beyond my control, but I'm keep I'm being updated. Other things I need to I need to take care of, and um, I'm handling them. I'm getting ahead of the situations as far as you know. What do I want to do? Where do I want to live? What's my goals for the next? Six months, two years, five years. Uh, I'm getting all of that straightened out. And then the, 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 the glorious day of when I return to the ocean is not a matter of if, it will be a matter of when. And that's a beautiful thing. And this is a beautiful moment. And you're beautiful people. And this has been a beautiful episode. So, um, you can find me all over social medias. You can find me uh, on my YouTube channels, Positive Sarcasm, Positive Sarcasm Podcast, and very, very soon, Positive Sarcasm Reacts. Uh, also, if you don't use YouTube a lot and you just want to watch the podcast on my Facebook channel, you can just go to Facebook.com slash POS Sarcasm or Facebook.com slash Positive Sarcasm. Um, but anyways, like, subscribe, share, donate, PositiveSarcasm.com slash donate. Um, also Venmo. At positive sarcasm. If you have questions, concerns, comments, contact me directly through my website or just email me directly. Positive sarcasm at outlook.com. Like, subscribe, share. If you want to share something, share last week's podcast to everyone. And if you want to share something even cooler than that, share, go to my YouTube channel, Positive Sarcasm, and share for love of for love of money. For love or money. That's a beautiful episode. It's all about the dog. All about the dog and the symbolism behind it. So go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. Please do. Just just share the link on your Facebook page or wherever and let people know that somebody is trying really hard to accomplish their dreams of creating original content and be taken seriously. And in some parts of the world, I am. I mean, somebody from New Zealand called me and asked me to make posing music for them. And when they did ask for it, they got it. They got exactly what they wanted. And I was really happy that I could provide that for them. And I made a new friend, per se. And his wife likes me, too, which is awesome. So, shout out to Stuart in New Zealand. Shout out to, you know, Cindy in Texas. Shout out to Brian in Lubbock, Texas. Shout out to Jorah in Minnesota. Shout out to Johnny Monotone in New Hampshire. <laughs> Um, shout out to Laura from the HP group, Ken, Chelsea. Thank you to everybody who, my, my best friends as well, and my family. And I will talk to you all, uh, I think next week. I'm gonna also probably gonna can a few, uh, uh, positive sarcasm react episodes. I'll also probably put a, a trailer up on my Instagram as well, stating that hey, this is a thing now. Come check it out. So until then, um, actually let me close out of that. I should remember to do that sooner, but sometimes it gets on these rants. I don't want to go on a rant here. But anyways, uh, we're done for today. Thank you for listening, watching, and subscribing. Find me anywhere, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, pod, uh, Podcast Addict, uh, Spotify, and all that stuff. But once again, it's good to be back. Recorded here from the Spare Parts Studio, this has been a positive sarcasm presentation. 